welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Today we're taking a look at the third part of our three-part series for DVD authoring. Um, where we last left off is we were in Premiere. We sent our project over to Encore, which is where I am now. And uh, we put in the content for the library so that we have all the templates to work off of. Um, and that's kind of where we're going to get started. Uh, before we go hog wild here with the menu and the submenus and all of that, uh, let's talk a little bit of DVD architecture really quick here. So up in the project tab, and you've got all these tabs here, you've got your project, you've got your menus, which we'll be heading into in a bit, your timelines, and then ultimately this is where we'll end up is for the build. Okay, So in the project timeline here, I've got a couple things going on. This is the sequence that got sent over from um, Adobe Premiere. And right now, the way it's set up, we've got this little icon on it. You can barely see it. looks like a play button. In fact, I can tell if I go ahead and right-click on this um, that this is a first play. It's already listed as a first play, so it's got the clear first play option here. What that means is when I plug this into a DVD player, this sequence would be the very first thing that would play. Um, so that's that's what it's telling it here. It's giving that play command to the DVD player the moment you plug that DVD in. Now we're going to be changing that in a little bit here, but before we do, um, let's take a look at our chapters and go ahead and get those set up. Okay, the first chapter down here in our sequence, we've got these little tabs here: Chapter One, Chapter Two, and Chapter Three, just like in Adobe Premiere. I'm going to go ahead and click on Chapter One, and it's going to bring up this window over here. Now, right now. There is no end action for Chapter 1. So what that means is when Chapter 1 plays all the way through, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to play Chapter 1, and that's it. And that's not going to help us a whole lot with the DVD. So I'm going to take my end action. I'm going to go to the sequence that we've got down there, and I'm going to make sure that it goes right to Chapter 2. Now I'm going to do the same thing for Chapter 2. Select that one, and I'm going to make the end action actually Chapter 3. So go into my sequence and chapter 3. Now the last one I'm going to leave blank here. I'm not going to do anything with that because we'll take care of that in another place which will be on the menu. Okay, So let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. Actually I can go to my sequence here and click on that and I need to set an end action there as well. So when the sequence is done playing all the way through here, what's going to happen is it will eventually return back to the menu. But we don't have a menu yet. So let's go ahead and put one in. Okay, that's the next step. Down here, we've got all these templates for menus, and some of them are exceedingly cheesy. Um, but the nice part is, is they provide a framework for you to work on so that you can go ahead and customize this different stuff. For instance, we're creating a DVD, which will be standard definition. So I can go ahead and take my party menu, and I'm going to go to the menus tab, and I'm going to go ahead and drag that in there. Let's drag that all the way up. Okay, now I've got my party menu in my menus tab here. Okay, and I don't know if you noticed, but when it was importing, it said uh, party menu PSD. So it's a Photoshop document. Now, the nice part about this is I can go in and customize all of this. Um, and um, before I do, just to give you an idea of how this is working right here, I can go back to my project tab. Okay, and uh, one of the things I would want to do is originally my sequence was set up to be my first play. I am, I've already switched my first play to the party menu. And the way you do that is you just right click on it and you would set this, I'll show you from scratch here, set as first play. Okay, now we've got that all set up as first play. Um, we can go ahead and test this to see what it looks like if the DVD were actually plugged into a DVD player, this is what would happen. My menu comes up first. Now, if I go to any of these, nothing is going to happen because at this point, um, I don't have any links or anything like that going on. So I can go ahead and exit, and I'm going to go back to my Menus tab and make sure that I'm on the main menu, and I'm going to customize this. So I'm going to just hit Photoshop button up here, and it's going to open up Photoshop, and now all that framework that was already pre-created for me, I can use but I can customize it to something that I'm interested in. So now I can take my background, I can change that all out. You can see all the layers over here. Um, one of the things that I highly recommend though is you've got all these different buttons that are pre-set up. Um, the buttons are kind of nice because in them they usually have some kind of a highlight as well. So when you mouse over it, this is what happens. You get the little party sign or the asterisk here. Okay, Keep all that stuff the same. 
but you can change the font, you can change the coloring of it, um, you can change all of this stuff. You can even, you know, let's say we have more than just four chapters on here, um, I can take the Party Highlight 4 and I can copy the whole folder here and now I'm going to have a fifth option on here. All right, so I would have uh, copied it right onto the next layer. Let's get over to where I can see everything here. And I just take that and I move it down here and get the spacing the same, like so. And then I would just rename that Party Highlight 5. Okay, And that's how I can go through and customize all of this for my DVD's needs. Now this is your basic um, kind of like scene selection menu here. Um, there's going to be a lot of different menus. Um, you're going to have play menus, um, play menus, and scene selection menus. This, I would say, is more like a, a sub menu. Okay. Um, and after I'm done customizing all this, the beauty is I go back over to Encore. Okay. And automatically it's going to update my menu here in just a bit. So if I go back to my menus tab and I double click on this, and actually let's go back to the Photoshop here. All right, we've got this, and I'm just going to go ahead and save my change here. I reopen that. Let's go up to File, and we're just going to click Save. Okay, and OK. And there we go. That's all taken care of. Now back to Encore, and it should update. There it is. So now my update is on here. I've got my five chapters, although I didn't change that four to the five, and we're ready to go with this. Now this is a main menu. I can take then a sub menu and add that on. So if I want to have distinct like scene selection, go ahead and drag that up here into my menu options. Let that import. Again, you see that it's a PSD, and uh, we're ready to roll with that. Okay, and now I've got my sub menu in here, and I can do the same thing with the sub menu as I did before. Um, before I do any of that, though, I want to start showing you how to link some of this stuff up. Um, we're not going to worry about the customization right now. I'll let you take care of that the way you need to. Um, but let's uh, take a look at how the submenu actually works here. Let's say I want Scene 1 here to be linked up with Chapter 1. I could always change the wording on that. So I can select the button that's already pre-created for Scene 1 here, and it's going to ask me over on the right-hand side what it is that I want it to be linked to. So when I click on Scene 1 or Chapter 1 button there, um, I would want it to go to the sequence and Chapter 1. And there we go. And see how it grabs like the first thumbnail that's actually in there. Okay, so that, uh, that gives me some options here for uh, what this is going to look like. Um, now, that one's all linked up. I do the same thing for Scene 2. Go ahead and click on that. And I go to the link, and I go to Sequence and Chapter 2. Now, here's one of the things that frequently happens is the beginning of your chapters don't really have any frame on it. A lot of times it's a black frame. So you're going to want to actually change that thumbnail in there so that it represents something different. Okay, um, And that's where you would go back over to edit the menu in Photoshop so that you could uh, set up your own little thumbnail in there that's going to better represent whatever your project is. Okay, The other way you could get around this is you could definitely uh, just take uh, and make sure that you start your chapters when there's a frame that's actually showing up like I did on this one. Okay, so those are a few options there. Now I would go through, customize all of this. Obviously I gotta set up my main menu button because now I've got a sub menu. I have to have a way to get back to my main menu. So I click on the link here and I say, okay, I wanna go back to the party menu here. Um, and I say default. Okay, that way when I click on that, it's going to take me over to that. Let's go back to the party menu really quick, set that up, double click on it, and let's say party highlight one is actually going to take me to my sub menu, just so you can see that work. I would want something that actually says sub menu or play all or something like that, so you uh, customize these links however you want. So I'm going to say, just so we can see it work here, that we're going to go to the sub menu from here. Okay, now let's go ahead and test all this out uh, because we want to see this in action. Go ahead and go to the preview, and like it's supposed to, it goes to the first play. Now for Party Highlight 1, I go ahead and click on that. It should take me to my sub menu. Okay, and Scene 1 should take me to my first chapter. And it does, right? And I'm going to go ahead and exit out of there. Now, um, pretty much, once I get all of those things set up, 
and get all of the links made. Um, I'm ready to start looking at testing this out to make sure it's ready to build. Okay, now that's the build tab. We come over to the build tab here and we are building a DVD and we are going to be building a DVD image. Okay, so I'm going to set that up. Before I go any further here, I want to check my project. Okay, so I click on check project and I click start. And here are a lot of the issues that I've got. This is the nice thing. One by one I can go through and eliminate these problems. Now these are all things that I didn't set up the links for. Okay, nothing, uh, nothing is all set on there, so that's why these are showing up. I also have an error on my sequence where the end action is not set. Okay, so what I would want to do is go ahead and close this and one by one go back and fix these things. Um, this is a very important step to make sure that the architecture of your DVD is all set up so that when it's actually put into a DVD player, it'll play the way that you want to. Okay, this is going to look and behave just like a real DVD, which is the beauty of all this. So go ahead and close that and I would go back to my project and now one by one say I wanted to fix that sequence I could go to the end action and uh, when it gets to the end this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier before we had our menus in here I could say that the end action is go to the main menu so I say that's default got that all set up now and if we went back to the build tab and we went check project and I click start now that one is eliminated Okay, so the rest of these I would go through one by one and fix them all up. Okay, after I get that all set where there's no error showing up whatsoever, I'm ready to burn. Gives me all of my data down here. Right now I'm only using 220 megabytes of um, 4.47 or whatever it is. It's 4.7 for a gig or for the uh, DVDs, and uh, I would give my project a name here. In this case, sample. Okay, and uh, what we want to do is. Um, well, at this point, we are pretty much all set up because we don't have to change anything. We've got one-sided DVDs that we're using. If you're using a dual layer and uh, you've got a large movie or a large bunch of information that you're putting on there, you would choose two, but we've only got one, so we're keeping that. And this is all set up pretty much. The last thing that I have to do is give it a location. So I go to Browse, and I say for this DVD image that I'm going to create, which is going to be a file that I can burn onto any DVD, I'm going to choose my desktop and I click Save. After I do that, it says that I'm going to have the sample ISO. ISO is an image file, and that's going to be on my desktop. And then I would click Build. Okay. Once I get into Build, um, it's going to let me know that if there were any problems that I didn't fix when I was checking my project, it's going to show up here. Now just to show you what this is going to look like, I would go ignore and continue. Hopefully you don't have to do that because you shouldn't have any errors on your project. So you would just say continue. Okay, It's going to save my project first and then it begins the very long process of transcoding. Now I don't have a whole lot of information on this DVD so it should transcode pretty quickly here. But we're not going to wait for that process to go all the way through. Alright, at the end of all this, what we're going to do is... Um, this is all done on my desktop now. Let's go ahead and get there. I'm just going to hide this, minimize and minimize, and you can see my messy desktop here. And uh, what we've got is we're going to end up with some kind of an ISO file. So this is one that was put together earlier for another project, which was an ISO file. And uh, probably the easiest way to go ahead and burn this DVD is I insert my blank DVD, DVD-R that I'm going to burn to okay and I'm just gonna quick go up here and I'm gonna go to disk utility okay and there we have it and I'm gonna bring that up now what I want to do is I want to burn something now these are already over here because I've been burning these to disk here but I go burn and then I would choose the image or the ISO that I wanted to use so um, it, Here's the one that I pointed out earlier, and then I would click Burn, and it's going to ask me if my super drive is ready to go. Okay, and of course, if I've already got the disk in there, I go ahead and click Burn. And that's the end of the process here, folks. So in three parts here, we managed to author a DVD starting off in Premiere, sending it off to Encore, creating menus and submenus, and now we are successfully burning it to a disk. Okay, thanks for joining us again for another episode of Red Hawk Media. Bye.